Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the process of evolution by natural selection. You should then be able to describe how this can lead to antibiotic resistance in bacteria and pesticide resistance in insects. Ok, now over the last few videos we've seen how organisms are adapted to their environment. Now a key idea you need to understand is that most organisms produce a large number of offspring, but the vast majority of these offspring do not survive. That's because food, water and space are all limited. Many organisms are killed by predators or by infectious diseases, and many organisms are killed by adverse weather conditions such as extreme cold or heat. Scientists call these factors selection pressures. Selection pressures are factors that affect the survival of organisms in an environment. Now selection pressures such as predation or the availability of food lead to the process of natural selection. And as we've seen, Charles Darwin used the idea of natural selection to explain how organisms evolve. I'm going to take you through the stages of natural selection and it's important that you learn them. I'll be using the example of the snowshoe hare, but the principles apply to any organism. Snowshoe hares are found in North America and they have a wide range of predators including the Canada lynx, bobcats and martens. To avoid predators, snowshoe hares are nocturnal, in other words they're mainly active at night. Snowshoe hares also have a well developed sense of hearing. Now in any population of organisms there's variation. Every snowshoe hare will be slightly different from the others and a lot of this variation is due to the alleles present. Scientists call the alleles present in a population the gene pool. Now mutations are constantly taking place within the population and in many cases these mutations are harmful. However, in some cases a mutation can lead to a new advantageous allele. Imagine that an individual snowshoe hare develops a mutation which leads to better hearing. The hare with the mutation has a better chance of detecting predators than the other hares. That means that this hare is more likely to survive and reproduce. Hares without the advantageous allele are more likely to be killed by a predator. Sometimes this is referred to as survival of the fittest. Now when the hare with the advantageous allele reproduces, the allele can be passed on to its offspring. And again, the offspring with the advantageous allele are more likely to avoid predation, survive and reproduce. Over time, the advantageous allele becomes widespread within the population. Scientists say that the frequency of the advantageous allele has increased in the gene pool. Over time, natural selection can lead to the development of new species and we'll be looking at speciation in a later video. Now evolution by natural selection usually takes place over a very long time period. However, there are examples where this is more rapid. When antibiotics became commonly used in the 1940s and 50s, natural selection led to the development of antibiotic resistant bacteria. And we looked at antibiotic resistance in a previous video. In this case, the presence of antibiotics was the selection pressure driving natural selection. And today, antibiotic resistance is a major problem in the treatment of human disease. For example, methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, or MRSA, is a significant cause of infections. Natural selection is also seen when insects are treated with pesticides. The Colorado potato beetle is a major agricultural pest which is widespread in North America and Europe. Initially, the Colorado potato beetle was controlled with pesticides. However, with pesticides acting as the selection pressure, natural selection led to the development of pesticide resistance. And now the Colorado potato beetle is resistant to over 50 different chemical pesticides. Ok, so hopefully now you can describe evolution by natural selection. 